What is up harvesters? Welcome back to my subscribers and if you're new here, welcome to Hobby Harvest. My name is Ken. So today I want to talk to you guys about creating the ultimate buck habitat and how we're going to do this has a couple requirements that maybe isn't going to be attainable on all properties, especially those small properties, those micro parcels, because the thing we are going to need is some land to work with here. I would love to tell you guys that all we have to do is just create this buck habitat and completely ignore the rest of the deer herd and I'm gonna put bucks right in front of you but the secret to this is is we actually have to take care of those does and fawns first and once we've given them their own area then we can give the bucks their own area and I'm going to get into how we're going to do that in this video so first off we need to do all of the things I talk about on my channel I'm not going to go into too much depth in this video if you aren't quite understanding what I'm talking about, go check out those other videos to get a little bit of background information on how to put into food plots and stuff like that. But the first thing you're going to want to do on your property is get those food plots in because the deer relate all of their other daily movement around those food plots. So when you put a food plot in, what you're trying to attain is creating that number one food source or at least a very high quality food source in your entire area we're talking like three miles away we hear bucks have that three mile range or whatever now most of that's at night but at night's when he's going to find your food plot if he lives three miles away and he'll start relating more to your property he'll start moving in closer and so forth once you have that high quality food source in so we really need to get those food plots up and running first and foremost now, once you have that high quality food source in, what's gonna happen is all of those does that live say a mile away because does don't have that three mile home range that those bucks do, you're gonna draw those does in to that food source and they're gonna love it so much, they're gonna find the closest available bedding area to it. And I can show you guys a drone shot that I got of does bedding down right next to my food plot. And that's literally what they will do if that first layer of bedding, if it's naturally available to them, that's how close they will bed to these food sources. Now, if you haven't put in any sort of bedding areas yet, we're relying on the natural bedding areas in the area. And so in some cases, that first bedding area may not be up until maybe a half mile away. So you're getting those does and fawns to bed down almost a half mile away to relate to your high quality food source and then maybe that next level of bedding isn't until a mile away. So then those intermediate age bucks who are also relating to your high quality food source are going to be a mile away. And then maybe those mature bucks, maybe they're three miles away. Maybe that next layer of available bedding, depending on your area, the deer density of your area, the topography of your area, all of that, they may be that far away. And so a lot of guys will say, they go, hey, I get does and fawns in front of me on my food plots all the time but the bucks always seem to come in after dark. Am I doing something wrong? Is my wind wrong? Like, what do I need to do? And like in a lot of cases, your deer are not nocturnal. Guys will say their bucks are nocturnal. That's not what's happening. What's happening is your bucks are just bedded down so far away that when all of the deer in the woods stand up about an hour or two before dark to head to their favorite food source, which is your food plot, those bucks are just so far away, it takes them a while to get all the way to your food plot and so they're getting there after dark. And so how we fix this is by putting in more bedding area on your property, which is why you need some room to work here. If you're on a micro parcel, you probably just put that food plot in. But if you have some more land, what you can do is create that first dough bedding area right off the edge of these food plots. Now, be careful that these bedding areas are in an area that you can still access in if you plan on hunting these food plots. Because like I showed you earlier, those does are only maybe 50 yards away from that stand when they're bedded down. So you really need to have a good hunter ingress or egress into that hunting location to be able to hunt those if those does are literally only going to be 50 yards away from you when you're climbing up in there. So be careful with that. You might want to put these bedding areas just a little bit further away than that, but they can be that close. The does will bed in them. Now, once those does are taken care of with their food and their bedding area, those bucks are still going to want to come into that food source because it is so high quality, but you're going to want to give those intermediate age bucks their own bedding area next. Now, what you want to do when you're like spacing these bedding areas out is you shouldn't be able to see bedding area to bedding area. So like you can see them, but like just imagine if you are standing in the middle of one of the bedding areas wearing blaze orange 
and you have your buddy standing in the middle of the other bedding area wearing blaze orange, you shouldn't be able to see each other. So there should be either some natural topography, just thick cover, even if it's just open, say hardwoods, those trees are just blocking your sight lines because there's so many of them between point A and point B. That's what you're going for here. Now, I love using topography on my Northwest Wisconsin property. I love to create bedding areas in like a bowl, if you can imagine, of topography because what ends up happening is the deer love to be bedded down where the sun is baking down on them. They love gaining that radiant heat during the day, but they also like to be out of the wind. So they like to be on the back side of the hill from the wind and then also be in the sun. So the sun changes throughout the day and then the wind can change at any given day or any time of the day as well. So the deer with having that bowl can kind of sit wherever they're in the sun and out of the wind and still be in the same bedding area. So something like that is ideal if you do have that to play with, but just a typical bedding area if you're in very flat land or whatever will work as well. And then what you wanna do in like my situation is you get up out of that bowl so there's topography and it drops down right into another bowl right next to it. And that can be where our intermediate aged bucks are bedded down. Now, as the crow flies, they're very close together, but you can't see each other in them because of that topography between them. And it's actually distance walked, having to walk up the hill and then down. They actually are pretty far away, even though on a map, if you just drew a line, they're not that far away from each other. But this is the type of thing we're looking for in this situation. That's about as close as you could put them together on a map, on an acreage close together, because you're gaining all that extra surface area with the hills and then the sight lines are cut down. Now, that mature buck bedding area is going to be beyond that. And so you want to get these as close to your food source as possible because that's the more likely you're going to see these mature bucks on that food source during the daylight hours. But again, they need to sort of have their own space on your property. Those bucks like to relate to those does, but they don't want to be right on top of them. So I like explaining this sort of like the bar scene. So those old mature bucks, those are like those old timers who are sitting at the dive bar. They're pouring their bottle of beer into their little glass and they're drinking out of the glass. If you've ever been in one of these old dive bars, walk in and just look at where all the guys are sitting down. So there might be a half dozen guys in this bar, but they are all like equally spread around the bar. They're not sitting right next to each other. And even though they're all sort of talking to each other, having a conversation, there's one, two bar stools between each of them. And they're all just kind of like taking up their own space in this dive bar. That is what a mature buck bedding area is. You want to give these mature bucks their own little space in this bedding area but they will still bed near each other. Bucks do run in bachelor groups the majority of the year. The rut is the time that they typically don't, but I have seen them running in bachelor groups during the rut also, taking their turns on a doe. Every one of them bred her. We, I know we like to think that these bucks like fight it out to let the strongest one breed all the does, but that is not at all what happens out there. The, the little guy's breeding just as many as the big guy and so on and so forth, and they're taking turns, and it's just madness out there, but... These bucks run together the majority of the year, but they those old bucks especially like to sort of take their own space. So imagine those like two bar stools between each old timer at the bar. These bucks will bed together, but not like how does and fawns bed together. This is how you can tell if you're finding beds out in the woods, if they are buck beds or doe beds. Those doe beds are going to have their fawns bedded down dang near touching them, where these bucks will have, you know, another large bed, which their buddy was in maybe 50 100 yards away but in that same general area and then they'll get up and they'll move together but that's how you create buck bedding in that third layer so we're already into how we're creating these buck only things on our property but i'm going to get into some more information on how we're going to actually give these bucks their own little private area of your property so those does when they have buck fawns how this all comes together is I think this is sort of built in so that it's like a natural way of not having inbreeding in the deer woods is when these does have these buck fawns, they kick them away and those little buck fawns will go about three miles away. And I'm thinking this is where that three mile buck home range comes from is those bucks were used to going three miles when they're out on their own for the first time. That's how far they had to get away from mom. But then mom only has that like say one mile home range and this is what we're going to use to our advantage to create these buck only areas on our property. 
Now, that young buck, he goes off and he goes off wherever and he finds his own new home. And I did do a video on how to attract young bucks to your property. So that young buck that grew up was born on your property, he is not going to be a buck that you ever see again. He got kicked away from by mom. He's going to go somewhere else. But what happened is everywhere around you, that happened too. And those bucks are going to come and they're going to look for some really good habitat. And if you give them that habitat... You're going to draw in all of those young bucks. They're going to call your property home, and then you can grow them into whatever you want to, whatever your harvest goals are. So that's why I did that video. It didn't do that well, which is unfortunate. There's some great information in there. You know, go watch that one after this one. It, there's really good information on how to, like, really manage those young bucks to manage them into big bucks. So anyway, what happens is all of those young bucks go away. You get those other new bucks come in, but they also don't want to bed down right next to those does and fawns because they just had a bad mental experience by getting kicked out by mom and the doe fawn that got to stay back at home they don't want to just hang out with new mom and doe fawn that happen to live here so they want to be in that like second level of bedding because they still want to get to that nice food source they found but they don't want to be right with that mean doe and her fawns that's why you need that second level of bedding and of course those old timers they want their dive bar. They want that quiet space in the woods. They want to be away from the noise of the women and children. So you can imagine like if some like bachelorette party for whatever reason walked into a dive bar because they wanted to just experience it or whatever. And all of a sudden they're playing pop music on the jukebox. They're screeching and laughing and having all sorts of fun. Those old timers at the bar at first, they're probably going to be like, well, this is new. This is interesting. Okay. Okay. But they're only going to put up with it for like a very short amount of time before they're like, there's another dive bar down the street. I'm going to go see if my buddy's over there at that one. And I think that's a little bit more interesting to me than sitting here where there's all this noise and commotion. And so that's exactly what these big bucks want too. They're going to be relating to the same sorts of like food sources that these does and fawns are. And they're going to like want to relate to them, especially during like the rut and whatever. But they don't necessarily want to be right with them. They just don't have the patience to put up with like that sort of pressure from the does and fawns and the noise and whatever. And so they want their own space. Now that's for bedding areas. Now they are going to want to get into those food plots though to feed. And like I said, those does and fawns will get there first because they're closer. And then those intermediate age bucks, then those mature bucks. And I always talk about like how much food, how many acres of food plots you should put on your property. And like a good place to start is if you have 40 acres, put two acres of food. But don't make a two acre food plot. I always say I would put in four half acre food plots. So what you can hypothetically do here is have does on say three of your food plots and it leaves that fourth food plot open for those bucks to come in. Or you shape your food plots into like a boomerang or a snake which I talk a lot about on my channel here. Because what that does is it lets them like compartmentalize themselves on that food plot so that you have like a doe family group over on this wing of the boomerang, maybe another one over on this wing of the boomerang, and then you still have like three other half acre food plots for the other deer to come into. And so this is all going to depend on like what the natural habitat is in your area, natural topography, and what the deer density is for your specific area too. So you might need more food plots, you might need bigger food plots. You know, some guys are only dealing with say a half dozen does and fawns show up to a food plot in a night. And some guys are dealing with a herd of 30 of them out there. So it just depends on your deer density. You guys kind of got to do whatever's right for your area here. But I like doing those smaller food plots and compartmentalizing them. Keep your cameras out there. See which deer are going to which food plots. Typically those bucks will visit every one of them. But which one's he getting to before dark? Because that's obviously the one you want to be targeting him on. But anyway... What we can do once we have all of these does handled, meaning we have enough of these bigger half acre plus food plots for your entire doe herd, you're not dragging does in from three miles away. So once you've been doing this for a couple of years, you'll probably understand like, okay, my does are taken care of. And what you can do then is what I like to do is put in micro food plots. Some guys call them kill plots. I like to call them just a little honey hole in the woods. And so what you want to do is adjacent to that intermediate age buck bedding area and that mature buck bedding area, you want to put in like a little eighth acre food plot. Now this food plot does not have to be the highest quality, like the level of quality of your other food plots. Although you do always want to try to attain that with all of your food plots. Those bucks will relate to a secondary food source if it's quiet. So like 
just like those does and fawns, like I was saying with the bar scene, you know, those young 20 something year old sociolites want to go to the biggest, most popular bar dance club that's got the DJ and all the specialty drinks and all of the important people are there. But those old timers, they want to just go to that dive bar, nothing fancy. They don't need the fancy music. They don't need the fancy drinks. They just need their own space. And if you give them that little kill plot or that little honey hole in the woods, you want this to be very thick, though. You want it to be like, like I said, a honey hole, that this thing's like completely enclosed with just thick, gnarly stuff. You don't want to be able to see off, off of it, just like all the other things we talk about with food plots. You want them to have to come onto the food plot. You can't, don't want them to be standing 100 yards off in the woods and can see if the food plot has anything on it or not. But this is where you're going to get those bucks. You're going to give them their own quiet dive bar here in the woods. And that's how you're going to create these buck-only areas on your property. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, if you put in a food plot, the does are going to bed down right next to it. And that could very well happen if you put in a little eighth acre food plot like this. But because those does put so much pressure on the other deer, including the other doe groups, this thing is so small, it's only going to handle about one doe group at a time. And if you put two on at a time, they're going to put social pressure on each other to the point that even they'll be like, we're just going to get out of here and go hang out on one of those bigger like half acre plus food plots. And that gives it an opening for that buck to get in there. But also, if you're taking care of your whole doe herd on your property, you will potentially take that one doe family group that wants to relate to that small food plot and you left now an opening on one of the wings of that boomerang for that buck to come in there. So just make sure you're keeping your cameras out there. See what these bucks are doing on a daily basis. You can really give them that like little area of your property for them to relate to. It's a good place for you to target them on. And then, of course, always put in those man-made deer trails, sweeten those up with those mock scrapes and those water holes. And you can always hunt those lines of movement and make those converge into a funnel for you to put a stand location. And then you don't even have to wait for him to get all the way to that food source. You can ambush him before he gets there. And then just the last thing that you want to keep in mind is as you continually improve your property like this year after year after year, you will grow the deer herd on your property. The number of deer will grow. So I've done a video or two on that in the past as well. You can go check those out. But what you're going to end up happening is you might have does need to relate to that food source just because the does in your area have raised daughters and have built the doe herd on your property. And so you may have to continually try to put in more food sources, more high quality food sources. Again, cut down on those sight lines. That really helps you to put more deer on a smaller property. But you may have to adjust this year to year. So don't just think that, hey, I got this perfect buck area built this year that 10 years from now it's going to be exactly the same if all of a sudden your deer herd's twice the size 10 years from now because you've been putting in all these habitat improvements. So this is just st something you do need to adjust year to year to year. We're never really done improving our properties and adjusting our properties in this habitat management world. So it's just something to keep an eye on. Keep those cameras out there. Target those bucks where they are, but give them that dive bar option to get them away from the noise of the women and children on those bigger food plots, and you can really put them in front of you this season. Plus, they're so small, they're so easy to put in. You can really do this this season if you already have those bigger food plots and everything in. And if you don't, you know, go watch the other videos on my channel. Go put those food plots in. Get started this year. This stuff just keeps going and going and going year after year, and every year you're going to see a better hunt because of it. If you guys feel like you got some value out of this video, go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you like this video, YouTube thinks you're going to like this one, so go check that out, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.